We're going to use the white earthenware for this project. Um, I'm making this video before the delivery, but <clears throat> it's been confirmed to me that there will be a delivery of clay, so on we go. Um, so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. And that is that when the clay comes directly from the factory like this, it has already had the air bubbles removed. They have a special machine that um, removes, that uh, churns the clay, removes the air bubbles, and then bags it in these cubes. So um, you're gonna be able to pull a piece off and immediately roll a slab. So you're gonna want a decent amount. What'll probably have to happen is I'll pull off a piece for each of you and hand it to you as you're ready to start these. As you know, we're all using our own clay. So I'll give you a slab. So I'm gonna cut off a piece, pretty big. Closing the bag, because we don't want it drying out. And then I'm gonna take you with me for this. I gotta move around the studio. Bear with me if it bobs up and down. I wanna show you where things are. So you're gonna come over to this shelf and you'll see that there are rolling pins and canvases. And we're gonna grab a canvas and we're going to the slab roller. So before I lay the cloth down, this is very thick and it'll be hard for the slab roller to roll across this without straining the machine. So if you throw clay down at an angle, it will stretch the clay. And as it stretches, of course, it's getting thinner. Sometimes I bang on it as well. And this is a little more doable for the slab roller. So you end up with a rectangle that's not too thick. So this is, we went from about three inches down to about an inch and a half, and that's perfect. Um, some people um, slap it, they misunderstand me, and they keep flattening it and stretching it and flattening it and stretching it until it's too thin. So you just want it to be about this thickness, all right? I'm gonna take that cloth and I'm gonna lay it on the slab roller. Fits perfectly. <laughs> I cut them so they would. And then I'm gonna lay the piece of clay across the bed of the slab roller. So when I say across, I mean it's a rectangle. We don't wanna do it this way, which is in the same direction as the slab roller because you'll get a really long skinny slab. If you take and you put the long end across the slab roller, you'll get a nice big wide sheet, and I'll show you. So there's this cloth that's on top of the roller, and there's this wheel here, and we're, we're gonna use the wheel. Make sure that this is lying flat and it's draped and hanging off the slab roller. If it's all folded up like this, you can't use it that way. It needs to be lying beautifully across the back of this of this cylinder, okay? And now I'm gonna turn this wheel. Now you can see the cylinder is coming more into the picture. And it takes a little elbow grease. That means effort, <laughs> strength. And once in a while I'm gonna pull on this to make sure I don't get any wrinkles. Because if you have wrinkles in the cloth, they'll be um, embossed into your slab. And you want a smooth slab. And I'm gonna go all the way until I've, I'm beyond the clay now. Then you're gonna drop this down, drop this down. Don't roll back with this on or it'll get caught underneath and it'll smush your clay even thinner and in a really ugly, funny way. So this gets laid down and then you roll back. And you do it gradually. Try not to let it slam against the end because I have cables on this thing and if you, if you do it really fast and crash it against the end here, hear it hitting, if you do that too fast, you'll snap the cables. Now I'm gonna pick this up, pull it back, and voila, I have a beautiful slab of clay. There it is. So um, there's a little dimple on it because this, there's, there's some flaws in the top cloth, but that's not a big deal. And now I need to take this back to my space. Uh, and in order to do that, I have the convenience of using the, the canvas cloth that I brought over. I don't have to pick it up with my fingers and rip it and put big dents in it. I can just gently carry it over. Now, some people misunderstand and they bend it really far like this into a U. Um, clay has a memory and if you bend it, 
dramatically, um, it may warp that in that direction when your piece dries. So you try to stretch it out wide as you carry it over. So I'm back at my work area with my slab of clay. Remember, this is what we're making. And I want you to notice that there's an area, the bottom half of this has an embossed pattern on it. And so I want you to take note of that as I explain the next part. We're gonna use a stencil. This is a pattern stencil. Ceramic artists often use this. Uh, use these kinds of things to create works. So I'm gonna lay the stencil down and I'm gonna lay it at one end of the slab. I actually have way more slab than I need here, but that's a good thing. I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna take, you can take um, a pencil or the end of your, you have a stick tool actually that would work beautifully for this. Let me grab one so that you're using, you see what I'm using and doing the same thing. Right, you have something in your in your toolkit that is wooden and it has a point on it. This is a little different shape, but you all have a stick tool. And I'm very lightly, don't dig, too, don't dig into the slab too much. Just trace, you're basically drawing into the clay. You're drawing around the, the stencil. And then I'm going to mark off uh, I'm gonna mark it about here because the top part of this is free of patterns. So a little bit down from that curve is where I'm gonna mark this. And you can take a ruler, you're each gonna get your own ruler. I have a stash of them here. You can take a ruler and use that as a guide. And I'm just gonna press gently to show myself where my pattern's gonna go. So my pattern's gonna go right in here. Now patterns can be made with, um, we have these special rollers. They're kept right next to the rolling pins and the cloths. It's in a box, you can bring that over. And they have all different kinds of designs on them. All right, we've got all different kinds. You're gonna pick the one you like. You can also use your stamps. As you recall, I had you making stamps Here's my little bucket of stamps. You remember this, right? You can also stamp your design. So let me roll, since I've not shown you that before. I'm gonna use this, and that's terrific because it's exactly the same size as the area that I zoned off. You might wanna practice with this first. So I think what I'll do, I definitely need to keep some for a base. You're gonna need a piece of clay, of slab for the base, right? Let's see, so I think, I think this will be plenty. So I'm gonna actually cut this here so that I can experiment on here. I can learn how much pressure. So let me practice. I'm gonna move this over because I was right on the seam of the two tables. Move this away. You have to press pretty hard with this tool. So I'm gonna use both hands so that I can lean into the tool as I press. And what I learned right there is that I pressed a little more on the one side than the other. Let me hold it up to the camera. So one side printed really well and the other side's a little light there. So you would learn a lot by practicing. Let's also look at what can happen with stamps. So I've got this fern stamp that I made. So I could line that stamp up and roll over and over again. Now I've just realized something, and I'm glad I realized it while I was doing the demo, is that this clay now has a, a pattern on it. It has texture, and that's from the cloth on the slab roller. And you may not want that to show up in your pattern. And to get rid of that, you would take a rib. You all have one of these, right? You take a rib, and you can also use uh, you can ask to borrow one of these, plastic. We'll just stick them in the bleach water when you're done. And I am going to, I'm gonna run my, my rib across that surface to make it smooth. There, I'll do it on here and hold it up to the camera. I have the sta camera stationary right now. I can't keep moving around. 
hard for me to demonstrate and it'll make you nauseous. <laughs> so I've smoothed it now. That's what I've done on here. I've smoothed it. All right, so there's the stamping. The last thing I wanna show you is we also have some fabrics that are have eyelets, meaning that they're, they're open. And you can also lay those down. Uh, go get a rolling pin. I can leave a whole bunch right here. If you were to use a rolling pin, um, in the end of the, of the period, you would put that rolling pin, you'd, you'd ask me where to put it because I'm gonna sanitize it so the next person can use it. But you can see that I'm gonna roll this into the slab, go back and forth a couple times. The clay should actually, should actually squeeze into the openings in the fabric. So I'm going over it a bunch of times. And then when you lift, you have a beautiful design. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so you can see it. All right, so those are the options. So what am I gonna do? I think, I kinda like that. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use the other end of it because it's not wet. All right, got too many things in the way. Clear the decks so that I can roll my rolling pin. And I've lined it up on my little zone that I made roll it in a few times, go back and forth until I see clay bulging into those openings on that cloth, on that fabric. And then I'm gonna lift it off. Oh yeah, I'm really happy with that. Now my stencil lines have kind of disappeared, but it doesn't matter because I still have my stencil and I can line it up with the top. Great. By the way, I have these instructions on a sheet so that you don't have to memorize this video. You can just look at this yellow sheet and there are key points and some even some little drawings that will help you figure out what I did. Time to cut out your stencil. You're gonna use your fettling knife. That's the long knife, looks like this. Be sure to hold that stencil as you cut along. So I usually follow it with my fingers so that it doesn't drift away and it holds the stencil still. You don't have to do it all in one swoop. Notice I'm doing it in sections. I'm gonna go around that again and around that corner along the bottom. You wanna save some of your slab for the bottom. That's gonna be perfect, so don't smoosh this up. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this and split it here. I'm gonna save this slab because I might need it later. I definitely will need some for the base. There you have it. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut um, a little angle on these, you have to freehand it. You just angle your tool. So instead of straight up and down, you're gonna angle it toward the middle. Not this way, but toward the middle. And you're just gonna take, make sort of a beveled edge. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, leaning your, your knife toward the middle. You're just taking the corner off. All right. Now we're gonna stand this up and put it in a U shape. So you have to be gentle because it's a little bit adhered to your cloth. Pick it up and make a U. And as soon as you make it into a U, it will stand for you. And then we're going to um, pull the edges together. So you can see it's gonna go like this, right? Nice clean edge. So in order to get those to stay, we're going to score and slurry them. So I'm gonna open it up again into a U and using my other hand as a support, I'm going to make this rough. I always make X's. Don't do this with a knife. It needs to be done with a needle tool because it makes a much better connection. A knife is sometimes a self-healing. I'm gonna turn this for my comfort level. A knife makes a sort of a self-healing line. It doesn't make a rough line. I often see students are like, oh, I'll just grab my knife and do this. Needs to be a needle tool. Does a better job. 
and then slurry. But folks, we're using the white earthenware, so we need to use the white earthenware slurry. Don't use the brown. Two different kinds of clay, two different firing temperatures. So I'm gonna add some slurry. And this is a really gooey slurry, so I think one side is sufficient. I don't need to load it up on both sides. All right, and now I'm gonna bring them together, line them up, and close them. You should have some oozing. If you don't have slurry oozing, you haven't put enough. Close that up, you can run your finger. And then I like to look at the bottom to see if I look into the pot to see if I have a nice even bottom, All right? So that needs to be pushed out a little bit right there. There we have it. You can turn it over to look at it. Okay, it's gonna be pretty gooey and malleable right now. And then I think I'll soften this. I don't like that point. I'm gonna soften this. That's better. Nice, make sure that's attached. Good. All right, so um, I'm going to, um, while this is nice and soft, I'm going to put a little bit of a bend on my pitcher, on my spout, so that it, it, you can see that it sort of bends forward. And this one doesn't, this one's sticking up in the air. So what you do is you wet your finger. And then I have a little crack here for some reason, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna patch that first. There's a little crack, so I'm gonna fill that in with some clay and smooth it out. Okay, and then using my thumb as a guide, I almost, I use this, I use this area of my thumb, put it up against the pot, and then with some water, you have to do this right away because the clay is soft. You can't wait and do this later in the game. This has to happen right away. So that's a little prettier. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna imagine liquid pouring out of this so that I really make a path for my, it's almost like a creamer, right? So now it's nice and soft and round here and it's very sharp edged here. So I think I will soften these two. I'm gonna wet my fingers and I'm sort of pinching the edges off of this, pinching, 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 running my finger up and down until I soften that sharp edge. That looks nice, if I do say so myself. All right, love it. There we go. All righty, isn't it pretty? Uh, I'm gonna go in with my feddling knife because it's a little, it has collapsed a little down there and I'm gonna push it back out. Oh, that's better. Hopefully you saw that. Um, because the way I had handled it, I had squeezed it shut right in here. So I puffed it back out again. As a matter of fact, I think I'll, I think I'll widen doing this all with the end of my tool, just pushing it out, giving a prettier shape. Good. All right. We're going to place the pot on, the, on the, our extra slab, which I have right here. So I'll put that slab like so. Trace with a pencil and cut it out. Again, I'm gonna make sure I like that shape. That looks good. Uh, pencil or your stick tool, mine is hiding. <laughs> Where are you, stick tool? There you are. Here we go, let's move this out of the way. I hope you can see. And I'm just gonna trace around. I don't recommend that you cut while it's on, the pot's there because you'll cut into the pot. So you're gonna trace it and remove it. I just noticed that I have some pretty serious cracks happening on mine, which is a good thing, because then I can show you. Look at these cracks I have, do you see them? So I'm gonna add a little water. Luckily, it's, it's, above, it's above where my, uh, my pattern is. So a minute ago, I showed you how to fix this part of the spout, and now I realize that I really need to do that for here too. There they go, they're going away. And then I have to change the shape of this, so I'm gonna fix it, make that pretty again, make it so it'll pour. Okay, I've traced it, I'm gently gonna remove it. <laughs> it's a little stuck, there we go. Put it aside, that's what I have. I'm gonna take my feddling knife and I'm gonna cut. Do it slowly, guys. 
If you think you don't have a steady hand, do it in sections, right? There's one little section. Now I can turn it, I'm right-handed, and this is more comfortable for me. Still very comfortable, so I don't need to turn it. But now I do, I'm gonna turn it around. There we go. And then this thing is way too, this thing is way too long on the end. So I'm going to just try to put a curve on that. I can always adjust it. Okay, time to score and slurry that on. Take the time to do this. I've been teaching ceramics for more years than I want to tell you, because then you'll know how ancient I am. But um, in all those years of teaching ceramics, I see a couple of things that happen every year. And one of them is that people find this a bit tedious, and so they don't take the time. Um, and then, you know, I take, the, I take their pictures out of the kiln and the bottoms remain <laughs> in the kiln and the, the picture comes up in, the, in my hand. Sometimes that happens when I'm loading them. So take the time. This is a little trickier. I'm gonna hold it this way uh, so that I don't ruin my nice edge. This is pretty wet, so this is a little tricky. Sorry, I'm out of the camera, aren't I? I'm not in my home studio. My home studio, I have a whole thing that my husband set up for me. And um, I just can't do that demo here. I don't have a slab roller. I needed to do it in the room to show you where everything was. All righty. I think I'm good to go. That's very wet slurry, so I'm only gonna add it to the bottom. If your, clay, if your slurry's a little drier, you should put it on both surfaces. All right, so I squeezed it a little. So I need to go back in with my, the, the, the feddling knife handle and line everything up on my bottom slab. That needs to come out too. That's not quite in the right place. Good. This side looks great. All right, now I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, a little, little e -e -e kind of thing. Just to move it a little bit to get it to, to really stay on there. Be careful about wiping too much because you're gonna wipe away your design. That's why we have these little stick tools so that you can do things with finesse. So like I can now clean up just the bottom edge with my stick tool, just pulling away whatever bulged out, looking good. Okay, so now I've got my finished pot, I need a handle. I've removed the cloth and get out of my way because I need to roll a coil and I don't wanna roll a coil on a cloth because it'll dry the clay out really fast. So instead, I take a piece of clay, I'm working on my table. You're all pros at the coiling thing by now. And I'm gonna roll a tapered coil. I'm going to roll a coil that tapers or gets skinnier at one end. This is going to be the handle. So you start with a decent amount of clay. You can always roll it. Yeah, it's getting a little flat, so I'm gonna pinch it. You can always um, roll it more so it gets smaller. Like, that's really clunky and big, I think, for this. That's, that's overkill for this. So I'm gonna keep going, and I'll just use part of it. Notice I'm using a lot of the table to keep it round. And you're gonna keep holding it up to see if it's the right size. That looks pretty good. So from here up, it's too thick. So I think I like what I have here. So I'm gonna mark it for myself. That's where I want to, right here. See, I mark it. I'm gonna take it back over here. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna cut it off, put that back on my pile. And so here's my handle. So I'm going to make sure that it is moist because I have to bend it and attach it. So this is just a damp sponge, don't overdo it. See, now it'll bend. I've got a little funny thing going on there. Now you can put it on and have it just be completely plain. Or if you used the roller with the designs, you could roll your pattern on here. Um, I used this. I wonder if this'll work. I'm gonna try. You can watch me experiment here. I'm gonna lay the end of this 
Trouble is I won't be able to press very hard, so this could be a bust, but let's try. So now I'm gonna roll. Just, I don't wanna, I don't wanna totally obliterate my handle. Just wanna see if I can get that pattern in there. I think I have, and remove. Oh yeah, that worked fine. See that pattern? There it is. All right, so the next thing is we need this to be fitted properly. You don't want too skinny a handle. Let me bring this into the camera. We don't want it, we don't want it to be too thin because then it'll be delicate. You want to be able to pick it up and have some oomph to it. You don't want to feel like, oh, if I pick it up by the handle, I'm going to break it. So um, I think I want to use the thicker end. I think I need to cut it short, right? It's too long. I'm going to cut it from here, not from here. So I'm gonna figure out where I want it. I think it's gonna go right like that. And I notice that this is a V. This is a V shape. So I'm going to lay this down and I'm gonna cut a V. So that I can fit right in there, perfect. And then I'm gonna bend it to see how I like it. And I think I want it to end there. Now you could curl this up, couldn't you, for a little design. That's an option. You could leave this curled up like that. That's kind of pretty. Or you could trim it, either one. I think I'm gonna trim it right there. And there's my handle. And now I'm going to lay it on its side and um, use the heat gun on it for a minute. I've put heat gun on this so it's a little less floppy. It's still very soft, but it's, it's holding its shape. I'm gonna make sure this is still what I'm looking for. And you want to look at the negative space of the handle so that you get it the way you'd like it. So I think I want a little more of an arch toward the top and a little less here. So that's what I want. Carefully lay it down. I'm going to score here. And down at the bottom. That's clay's really gooey. And then I'm going to do the same thing inside the V cut that I made. And down at the bottom. And since this is gooey, the slurry is going to go on the piece that I stiffened up with the heat gun. There we go. And then I'm going to attach it here. Give it a little pressure. Look at my inside hand supporting it so I don't smush my opening. I'm going to set it down here. And then, folks, you can't just look at it this way. You have to look at it this way. Do you see it's crooked? I need to straighten it out. Sometimes you'll turn it around and it'll be way off to one side. So whenever you add handles, you look not only at the profile, but you also look straight on. That's, that's crooked, there we go. There we are. That's looking nice. I don't love this connection, so I think I'm gonna take a little piece of clay, moisten my hands so I don't have it crack on me, make a little strap, a little coil of clay that I've moistened and I'm gonna, I'm gonna flatten it down a little bit like a ribbon. And I'm gonna set this on top like so. It looks like a little strap. Yeah. So let's pull this off because I don't really like the connection. I don't like the way the handle's connecting to the pot. It doesn't look very nice. It doesn't have a very finished look. And so this will, this will both form and function. You've heard me talk about it before. Not only will it look better, but it's going to help secure that handle to the pot. And I should show you a good habit to get into, and that is a banding wheel. I keep trying to crane my head around to both sides. If you get a banding wheel, then you can, yes, then you can look from all angles to see how the piece is looking. Looking at the negative space here, looking at the negative space, is that the arch I want? Looking at the end to make sure this is lined up straight, it's not crooked. All right, and then to make this look a little more thought through, I'm going to take the blunt end of this paintbrush and I'm going to poke this in here. Whoop got to support it from the inside. And I'm gonna poke this in here. It's like those little barnacles I put on my coil pots. 
Oh yeah, that looks nice. Let's see, did I forget anything? I don't believe so. Uh, I might go in with the handle of my, and belly out the piece one more time. I picked it up a bunch of times and I think I, I think I smushed it. So I'm going in and pressing it out. Of course you'd need to sign it, but it would have to get leather hard. When you finish making a piece, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, you want to put the whole piece under plastic for 24 hours. Do not, I'm fixing my, <laughs> fixing my spout, I dented it. Um, don't just stick it in the kiln room, having just made it. Clay shrinks when it dries. If it shrinks too quickly, if it dries too fast, then it, it shrinks too fast. And that's when you get stress cracks. Everything needs to settle and, and dry slowly. And that's the soft slab pitcher. I hope you enjoy making it. It's fun. I think I'm gonna add a dot at the bottom to match and to make sure that that's really well attached. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy.